Well, I did not think I'd be doing two Nets videos within like two hours of each other, but uh, the the mandates were just lifted. Kyrie Irving can now play home games, which means obviously he can play every game. Of course, the Ben Simmons thing, that still matters, but of course this is massive for Brooklyn, and um, now you look at the remaining schedule for the Nets, instead of having Kyrie available for like two or three of their remaining 10 games, now he can play in all 10 games, which means... Is there a world in which they win all 10 of those? I mean, it's possible with how insane Kyrie has been playing lately, on top of KD just being KD. If Ben Simmons ends up playing among those 10 games in any capacity, then that will be a welcome thing as well. We're going to have to see, you know, herniated disc and that thing just, that's like a day-by-day -day thing. He's had like no on-court work, but yeah, Kyrie, he could play every game. So there you go. And now we think about the standings in the East. Does this change the possibility of the Nets having basically an Eastern Conference Finals-esque opponent in round one? I mean, maybe, but here's the thing. If the Nets get number six, they get Philly in round one. If they still are in the play-in tournament after their remaining ten games, they're going to get the Heat or the Bucks in round one. The only scenario would be if they climbed to number five, which I guess is not impossible, but they would have to basically go like 10-0, and and the Bulls and the Cavs and the Raptors would have to really struggle in which case they would get the Celtics in round one, and that terrifies the hell out of me, so I'm going to hope that doesn't happen. At least that's how it all is right now. Of course, again, everybody's got about 10 games left. But yeah, to state the obvious, Kyrie Irving being able to play every game, that means the Nets can now beat anybody. If I try thinking about the potential matchups with the Nets, and you know now obviously a full-time Kyrie in there, if you're Miami, I mean, you can start with Lowry on him, you can try to be physical, you can attempt to put like Jimmy or PJ on him for the sake of more size, but I would imagine they would like to try PJ Tucker on Kevin Durant to start. The Bucks would, I, I imagine, start with Drew on him. The Sixers, are you trying Thibel on Kyrie or are you putting him on Kevin Durant? With the Celtics, you can say Marcus Smart. Of course, the Celtics switch so much that who ends up defending who by the time a possession ends is usually pretty different. I would say all these teams in the East have like some specific quality on defense, right? Like with the Celtics, it's the switching and putting Time Lord on a blah shooter to let him free roam a little bit. With the Sixers, it's Thibel and Embiid's rim protection. The Bucks, it's walling off the paint as much as possible. With Miami, I think it's the fact that they can throw a zone at you. But then the next possession, they're switching everything. And then the possession after that, they're switching like one through three or something. And then other times they're going under or whatever. All that's cool and nice and great. When you have Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving just bombing pull-up threes or just beating their guys in one-on-one, -on -one, it's like, oh boy, this is tough. Now, of course, it's still going to be a challenge, and this is why the Ben Simmons thing still matters, the Seth Curry injury, it all still matters. The Nets are not going to run through the East like nothing. But, of course, this took their odds from, let's see, to like, oh yeah, they, this could definitely happen now. Other things to think about, I mean, for one, we saw the defense that Kyrie played on James Harden in that one game. If Kyrie could give them at least something close to that for a whole stretch, that would be huge. I also feel like Drummond is quietly one of the more important dudes, you know, not among the star players moving forward. And of course, the Nets have so many guys, including big dudes, that maybe by the end of it, Drummond's not getting as many minutes as I think he will, but he has started every game he's played for them, I'm pretty sure. The lob potential is there, even if maybe Drummond is not as athletic as he is now compared to, I don't know, four or five years ago. But if teams are going to be freaked out about those Kyrie pull-up jumpers and Drummond's dive into the rim, that means it's either going to be a Drummond lob, Kyrie might make something happen anyway because he's great, or you got, like, somebody open in the corner, and especially if it's, like, Bruce Brown, they're going to help off of him a little bit more. But, you know, Kyrie can make the right play in that instant. I think this also brings up uh, something, especially if uh, Ben Simmons comes back and if the Seth Curry injury is not too bad here, where... There's a lot of dudes in this rotation, and not everybody can play. And it's easy to say, okay, Kessler Edwards, David Duke Jr., it's going to be tough to find minutes for all you guys. I mean, Kessler Edwards' minutes have been so up and down recently. One game he plays 25 minutes, the game before he just doesn't play at all, you know? But I also think when the playoffs really ramp up and we've got a 2-2 two, two series, game five, and wherever, there's a chance that, I don't know, Patty Mills might play nine minutes and Dragic plays 27. Like, that's just how the playoffs go sometimes, you know? And, of course, because Kyrie is full-time again, 
those are more questions to answer for the Nets. But it's a good problem. It's not even really a problem. It's just a question to answer. I mean, this is what happens when you can finally have one of your best players available for every game. Uh, so, yeah. And perhaps somewhere down the road we can see a Kyrie Irving, Ben Simmons pick and roll for two games in a row or three games in a row. That would be very nice. <laughs> 